Assalamu alaikum YouTubers Welcome back to SLK Tools Here in this section we will be learning the design of a single square column footing Say if you are asked to design a square column footing having a column 14 by 14 inches and some other materials property are also given like the steel grade which is 60 ksi fc prime just per footing 3 ksi fc prime 4 ksi per column the service life load equals 260 caps the service dead load equals 390 caps and the allowable bearing capacity just 5 feet below the grade is just 6 ksi so according to the given data we have of course some things like the size of column which is 14 times 14 inches fc prime for footing 3 ksi fc prime per column fy and the service dead and live load of course the allowable bearing capacity 6 ksi 5 feet below the grade i think the data is quite enough to design this footing so i'll come over here straight to design solutions in the design solution my first approach will be just the effective bearing capacity calculation the effective bearing capacity is always equal to the allowable bearing capacity minus the pressure by soil fill if you see we only need some plug-in check-ins so the effective bearing capacity equals the allowable bearing capacity which is just 6 caps per square feet negative the pressure by soil fill remember the allowable bearing capacity is just 5 feet below the grade so I'll multiply the material unit weight with 5 feet so I can get of course 5 times 0.127 remember this is just the average video of unit weight just per soil material okay and this may be just little different according to the filling material this time I just took this guy as the average video which is just 0.1 to 7 k per CFT this is the unit weight okay you must get the effective bearing capacity equals 5.365 caps per square feet when we have the effective bearing capacity of course we can calculate the size or the area of this given footing and this will be just equal to the service dead load plus the live load divided by the effective bearing capacity we need some plug-in check-ins like the dead load is just 390 cap plus the service live load is just 260 cap divided by the effective bearing capacity which is 5.365 cap per square feet so you get of course 1 to 1.155 square feet let me assume the one side of this putting is A and another side is A remember the area of a square is just the side square so A square will be just equal to 1 to 1.155 square feet I just need the one side of this square putting so I'll just put square roots on both sides of course you can get A equals 11 feet and this is a pretty nice video okay so 11 feet is one side of the square footing and another side of the square footing in the third step I just need to calculate the upward pressure caused by the factor load remember this will be just per strength design and of course for this we have a nice plug-in check-in formula like the factor load divided by the area of the square footing here the factor load is just 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load and this may be different according to some conditions like you can clearly see in this table table 1.2 I just took this nice screenshot from a nice book design of concrete structure I think it's written by Nelson yep of course so if you see in the conditions the basic condition is just the vector load equals 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live if you have some other conditions like the dead plus ploid, snow rain, temperature and wind, of course you can change your factor load formula. And you can clearly see the earthquake is also mentioned over here. And this is in the ACI code. So just plug in check in we can get of course 1.2 dead load, a dead load is just 390 cap plus 1.6 live load which is 260 divided by the area of the footing remember the footing is just square the area will be at side square so 11 square or 11 times 11 you should get the pressure equals 7.3 cap per square feet this will also help me in determination of the depth or the thickness of this footing 
So in the fourth step, I just need to calculate the thickness or the depth of this pudding. Here the depth means just the effective one. Remember, the effective depth means just the, uh, the distance from the center of these main bars up to the upper fiber of this pudding. So if you have the effective depth, of course you can calculate the overall depth. We'll just add some uh, concrete cover and some diaps of bar. No problem, this is quite simple. We'll do this guys just a little late. Actually, the, the, the depth calculation is quite simple. We do this guy commonly based on two wire punching shear on the critical parameter. But what's the critical parameter over here? The critical parameter is just the square area at d by 2 distance from this column. So here I just need to assume the depth. And then we'll just do some checks uh, for the depth if the depth is ok or not. So this time uh, I'll assume the depth is 30 inches. If my depth is just 30 inches, what will be my critical parameter? Let me call this guy as B0 or BO, no problem. Whatever you call this one. Remember the critical parameter is just uh, the parameter of this critical square. If you see the column dimension is known. The one side of column is just 14 inches. So 14 plus half depth one side and half depth the other side. So 14 plus one depth of this pudding will be just the one side of this critical square. So if you know the one side, of course you can calculate the parameter by multiplying it with 4. So 4 times 14 plus D will be the critical parameter. Plug in chung in, we can get 4 times 14 plus the depth is just 30 inches. You can get of course the critical parameter equals 176 inches. Now I need the shear force for checking the depth, if the depth is ok or not. So the shear force is just equal to VU, the upward pressure, minus that acting within the critical parameter. Remember, the upward pressure is already known. We did this guy a few minutes ago. If you see, the shear force will be just the upward pressure. The upward pressure is just 7.3 k per square foot. We did this guy a few minutes ago. Remember this guy. This is caused by the vector load, right? So plug this guy over here in this equation, 7.3 times 11 square. 11 square is just the area of the square footing minus 3.667 square. What's 3.667 square? Of course, this is just uh, the area of this critical square. But where does this guy come from? Of course, if you see, we have of course the one side equals 14 inches plus the depth of the square footing. So plug the value of the depth in this guy, which is just 30 inches. So 14 plus 30 equals 44 inches is the one side. If you just divide 44 inches by 12, you can convert this guy into feet, which is just 3.667. So the one side of this critical square is just 3.667 feet. So what will be the area? Remember the area of a square is always the side square. So the side is 3.667. I just take the square of this guy. By doing some mathematics with this guy you can get of course 785 kips. Now we'll check if the depth equals 30 inches is ok or not. And we can check this guy only for two things. One per punching shear and one per the beam shear or one way shear. This time let me check first per the punching shear. Per punching shear, the shear strength must be greater than the shear force. And the shear strength is always 0.75 times 4 square root of Fc prime B0 or BO times the depth. So this must be greater than 785 kip, which is the shear force. We did this guy little a few minutes ago. If you do some plug in check in like 0.75 times 4 square root of Fc prime, Fc prime is just 3000 psi or 3 ksi no problem and the critical parameter was just 176 inches times the depth, the depth was just 30 inches. This must be greater than 785 kips. So do some maths with the left hand side, you can get 8675 92.5 pounds. This is of course just greater than 785 kip.
if you need to convert these pounds into kips of course you can divide these guys by 1000 so you can get 867.6 kip which is of course greater than 785 kips so the depth 30 inches is just okay for punching shear yes we are okay over here now we'll check the depth equals 30 inches per one wire beam shear so let me do this guy over here check per beam shear or per one way shear and this is the same thing we did a few minutes ago the beam shear strength must be greater than the beam shear force and the beam shear strength is just in this pump 0.75 times 4 square root of fc prime bd this must be greater than this 7.3 which is the pressure times the one side of this pudding which is 11 times b if you see there are two types of breadth what are these breadths let me just take a section at the distance d from this column and let me draw the section just like in palm of beam over here the one side will be just 11 feet because this is just the side of the square footing now the question is what's the another breadth of this beam and if you see this is just the breadth of this strip okay and the strip is just at the distance d from this column so you can clearly see the one side of this putting is just 11 feet so we'll subtract 14 inches which is the one side of this square column we can get the one side equals 4.916 feet and the another one as well 4.916 feet if i subtract one times depth from this 4.916 we can get of course the breadth which will be just 2.416 and this is quite simple of course so the one side of this beam is just 2.416 feet now we can do some plug and check in right of course 0.75 times 4 square root of fc prime times the breadth times 30 is the depth this must be greater than the 80.3 which is of course 7.3 times 11 times the breadth the breadth in beam shear strength is just 11 and the breadth in beam shear force is just 2.416 so let's do some plug and check in for all these both guys we can get of course the expression like in this palm from one side you can get of course 650 kip this must be greater than the another side and the another side will be just 193 kip you can clearly see 650 kip is just greater than 193 kip so the depth equals 30 inches is okay for the beam shear yes this is really good and this is how we determine the size of this pudding as you can clearly see the effective depth is just 30 inches now what's the overall depth of this pudding of course i'll do some additions like uh, addition per cover let me take this guy as 2 inches and approximately 1 inch per bar diameters so the overall depth will be just 3 3 inches which i can take of course 3 6 inches and this is of course equal to 3 feet and this is a nice video right and this is of course a best choice for me over here now we are ready to design the reinforcement for this pudding but i'm not gonna do this guy in this lecture and this is the same method we have done in one way slave design just finding some moment and do some calculation uh, per steel area and then finding some numbers and development length and it's quite simple do that by yourself this is how we can calculate the dimensions of the size of square footing thank you guys for watching see you next time and wassalam